Hey everyone, it's Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I am very excited to bring you this speed build. It is a Victorian style townhouse. As you all know, I love the Victorian style. But one thing you might not know about me is I also love townhouses for some reason. I don't think I could ever live in one. Who knows though, who knows? I mean, I could probably never afford it though, but... <laughs> Um, I was just really excited for this build. I got an idea from um, another video of someone making something that kind of looked like a townhouse, um, but it was not attached to other townhouses. Um, not, nothing wrong with that. It's just something that I wasn't watching their build. I was like, huh, that would look a lot better as a townhouse. So. Um, I started researching townhouses, looking at more pictures of them, and trying to understand more just about townhouses in general. And then I went in and building my own. So uh, some brief historical things about townhouses is, so for it to be considered a townhouse, it has to be terraced, uh, which is something I did not know originally, so that was a fun little fact. Another thing I found out was that townhouses originally, um were for the wealthy and the noble classes to be a kind of temporary or seasonal home for for them in the city essentially these people who own townhouses often owned many like country homes in different parts of the country like in by the country i mean kind of like off in the country and the townhouse was just kind of a seasonal or a place they would go visit, like a vacation home, really. And that's something I was really interested in while I was researching. And it kind of makes sense. I feel like a lot of books I've read that take place in the Victorian time or even afterwards, anyone who owns a townhouse or a city home doesn't spend the whole year there. And that was just something I was very interested in. But of course, the families I was building when I was making this and had in mind of, I definitely see them as living here year round. Maybe one of the families might have a separate vacation home. But yeah, that's something I really wanted to get into with um, this build is when I was building it, I had a very specific idea of who lived here, what it was like for them, like the different uh, dynamics within each family. And we'll get into that a little bit later as we get a little bit more into the build, but what also really inspired me um, is when I lived in Boston, there's lots of townhouses and there's even some Victorian ones that were, that I loved because they were so, so different than the other townhouses, I guess, in the sense that, you know, the other townhouses, you know, they all kind of like, if you've seen one townhouse, you've kind of seen them all, but something about the Victorian just Maybe it's just because I love the Victorian town. Every time I see anything remotely Victorian, I'm like, ooh, I love it. That's great. A for effort. You've done a great job. Um, but there also weren't, there aren't too many in Boston. There's definitely lots of townhouses, but there aren't any that really are very screamingly or very specifically Victorian. But there are quite a few, and I loved seeing them. I've seen a few in Somerville, some in Cambridge definitely some in, a lot in back bay but yeah so as i was making this build i was really thinking of who are these families and of course they'll have to have money townhouses are not cheap uh even i think now we're you know townhouses still really are for people with money if, to put it uh bluntly so of course the families i was thinking who live here definitely all have to do something to keep up with the money but yeah for the first family i was thinking that they're really into like nature and gardening which is a little funny that they live in the city but you know they just love there you'll see i put a big flower um like like flower garden and what i call like their gardening square as well as they have bees that they um, keep in the backyard as well as they also have a um a horseshoe pit yeah so they definitely you know love to be outdoors is what my idea for this family is the neighbors the middle house 
on the middle townhouse. I think that for them, they might have some kind of fisherman background, but they're definitely a little bit more conservative, a little bit more traditional. Um, and you'll also see this reflected in their homes. Like the first family, I think they're very, I'm thinking of it as a very like light and happy family. And you'll see that their home's been a little bit more renovated. It's not um, truly traditionally Victorian. The inside's definitely had work done while the other two homes definitely are more traditional. And then, like I said, the middle family definitely, I'd like to think that they come from maybe old money or, you know, they have some kind of conservative background or something. And, you know, you'll see there that they also only have, there's only room for one, like, heir, one child, one teen or whatever. And the parents, while in the first home, you'll see I have three rooms. So there's room for, you know, a teen or young adult and then a teen or child and then a parent's room. And then the last home I was thinking of, um, which I was really, in, I, I really got into this one and was thinking about the backstory a lot. Um, for the last one, I have an idea where it's going to be a vampire and his ward. I'm not really sure quite yet how the ward came into, um, you know, ending up with the vampire, but also was thinking that the ward has no idea um, that the man she lives with is a vampire. And you'll see that home is definitely very traditional, Victor the most traditional out of all of these. And it's really dark, very maze-like. Um, which is something I was really actually proud of in this build is I was really trying to get that. Um, in Victorian homes, it's very common for it to be very maze-like, very um, like a labyrinth. And you know, they often are filled with rooms that are like drawing rooms and parlors and libraries. But you'll see in the first home, like I said, there's definitely been some kind of renovation done. Um, some of those walls are probably knocked down. Some the wallpaper was removed some fresh paint was put down well the other two definitely have the more traditional feel with like i said the last one being the most traditional and like i said from the outside of the home i was really trying to get an idea for you know who lives here and what are they like like this for this first family put all these flowers out making very bright the second family they have um this like little disc crest thing and I was thinking maybe it's a family crest uh, maybe something to relate with their family and then they have some like fishing oars hanging down my idea for that was thinking maybe their their money comes from the ocean um, some kind of sea business and then um, you'll see that they have um, some like dead or dying bushes in their gardening area and my idea is just my idea is that, like thought process that they just don't think about gardening it's not something they're interested in it not it's not even on their radar and then the last one for the vampire home you'll see that it's really just like nothing is in their garden area it's all dead and that's just because you know they don't go out during the day so they wouldn't garden um i also put the trash can out for the first fan or the middle family in front while the other people have their um have a garbage can um, out back. Once again, just really trying to get an idea of who these people are, what their personalities are. You'll also see with the vampire home, I put all these really dramatic, dark, um, full length um, curtains in the windows. So, like from the outside, these windows look black. And of course, you know, for a vampire, that makes sense. But of course, if you don't know, a vampire lives there you're gonna be looking at this home and be like what the that's a little creepy but yeah here so i'm working on the, the kind of backyard space and my idea was thinking um they would all have access to it and you know people who don't live in the home can't just like waltz in and use your backyard and my idea also was i was trying to give them all their it's definitely a shared space but i was trying to break it up in a way that still felt kind of like oh if you live in this home this is kind of your space but it's definitely a shared space and my idea is i'm really interested uh, when it comes to the gameplay is like what would the relationships between all these different families be because you know for one you have the first family very 
I'm thinking of them being very bright, very fun, very active. Then you have the middle family, which I think they just kind of keep to themselves. Um, they're definitely, I definitely think them that they'd be very polite, that they're not going to be rude. Um, and then the last family, um, the vampire house, thinking, you know, like the vampire, he probably doesn't know his neighbors. Uh, but then most interestingly, his, his ward, I like to think that she's very interested in getting to know the neighbors. So she's going around talking to them and they're all just kind of like, oh yeah, we've never met your, your, your uncle or whoever he would be to her. But yeah, you see here, so I do this a lot when I build is I put down the, where I want the um, dining rooms, I put down the table first. And that's because I really have no concept of how big the tables are sometimes. And I sometimes make dining rooms too small or too big in some cases, and then end up just putting like four tables in, which is really ridiculous and excessive, but hey, it works out. Um, like I said, with this one, I was really trying to get that maze-like, labyrinth-like feel to the floor plan. But I was also putting it in these archways because I wanted it to still have that feeling that it, the house still breathes, that you're not going to be kind of stuck in all these um, closed-in rooms. But like I said, I was still trying to um, keep the room small enough. Um, to create that labyrinth like feel but also big enough so that you can actually use them here I'm heading up to the second floor um, here I'm putting in the parents room this middle room this like middle um, townhouse here has um, closets and so does the, the vampire one also has one closet I believe uh, and I buy closets, I mean the closets from, um, I think City Living we got them from. We also got them from one other one, but I always think of the City Living ones. And I think, I love them. I think they're a little, they're a great creation. If you want to create a, like, a walk-in closet, you still can, but, like, they're perfectly fine for, um, for just, like, a place to store clothing and for your Sims to plan outfits and stuff. I love it. Here in the first apartment I'm playing, or townhouse, um, you see I put it down the three bedrooms as well as a living room and a bathroom on the second floor. I think it's a little weird that their living room's on the second floor, but I also, you know, on the first floor, I didn't really have a spot where I felt like with what I wanted to do, like I definitely could have, I have a, um, a office downstairs for that one definitely I could turn that into a living room but it just for some reason felt more sense especially in this those kind of um, the Victorian uh, windows there I just felt like it would be nicer to put a couch in there and a TV and stuff so so if you go to live here or the Sims you know you're gonna have to either move the living room or deal with it upstairs and that's another thing I just wanted to bring up is if you download this you feel free to change it how you want if you want to turn the one of the offices into another bedroom like a nursery or something or if you just want to change up any of it like don't feel married to what I do um, that's also like why I don't always feel bad about using all the packs that I own in my build um, because you know if you don't have a certain pack generally speaking the the structure of the building and all the um like windows and doors i use i try to keep it um i try to pick from like one pack or keep it as like minimal as possible especially for this one um to keep the outside relatively or comp is um similar as possible or keep it with the minimal amount of changes is the packs that you probably need are the most would be strangerville vampires and then maybe if you wanted you could also if you don't have it um the city living and get famous packs would also help but like once again um you don't need those specific packs for this to work you really the only packs I would say that are really needed for this build to work intent as I'm intending it would be Strangerville and Vampires. 
everything else I say is replaceable with um, base game or when it or whatever packs you own so if you're like looking this to download like oh I don't have all these packs like I said it's really just a handful of them that you need the other ones are just really excess um, like that couch there I got from the pack I know everyone hates the uh, my first pet stuff that like pink one right there and I know that pack is like banned um, like I know people who play the sims hate it I'm gonna admit I got the pack before I knew we were supposed to hate it so I apologize if you're like a oh, traitor I just didn't know at the time I'm sorry but yeah, so if you download this, if you want to change some of the layout, if you want to change some of the rooms, if you're like, hey, I love this build, but I don't want to play a vampire, you can take the coffin from upstairs and move it, or maybe change it into your gameplay as maybe who lives in the last one. Maybe that's a funeral home and not like an actual home. Who knows? Um, like I said, you can be creative with it, or you can just change it. Like, I'm not going to be offended. For me, I think the part of the build that's the most interesting oh for me personally is the um, the floor layout and the the structure of the building how the building looks for me those are the things that i'm most like attached to but like if you download this and go ooh, i can't deal with this bedroom or this bed you know feel free to change it but also like if you download this and you don't have all the packs don't feel like you're missing out on something like like I said it's it's mostly just excess furnishing that you can change um, like I said usually when I furnish homes especially if I'm doing like a Victorian one I try to just pick furniture or a style that feels Victorian but you know like your home just because it's a Victorian style doesn't need it doesn't mean it needs to be furnished with Victorian furniture I know plenty of people who have lived in Victorian or other very like decade era specific furniture and you know they don't furnish it though I know some people who like they're going oh, my home's from the 1920s I have to only put 1920s furniture I'm like that's valid but I've also met people like yeah my home's from the 1940s but I have all very contemporary furniture and appliances but yeah that's also valid so that's what I also feel like if you're gonna download this and you don't have all the packs or you don't want to get all the packs go for it like do whatever you want I'm just happy that you're playing with it and you're getting joy out of it but yeah so I'll be wrapping up the recording here because I didn't record myself actually furnishing it because I always take way too long furnishing homes but um, you'll see it in the pictures how I furnished it. Hopefully you like it. If not, I'm sorry. But feel free to download this off of the gallery. The links and the info will be down below. Thank you so much and have a great day.